We'll be starting off with this Nigerian newspaper here in Nigeria. And on the front page of this Nigeria, the story says, After 197 days, ASU strike now indefinite. We've met 80% of their demands, says federal government. Membership of striking union not compulsory for state varsities. Unfortunately, we've been following with the updates of the ASU strike. And it doesn't seem like there's an end in sight. PDP crisis. By the grace of God, something will happen, says Ricky. <laughs> Ooh, theatrix. Editors, Serap, stop NBC from shutting down 53 broadcast stations. Court rejects federal government's request to extradite, uh, extradite Abakiari to the US. And again, in the world of politics, 2023, they say, again, Chikarao defects to PDP, relinquishes NNPC senatorial um, ticket, and appeal court to reinstate Obore Wori as Delta Governor candidate, Delta Governorship candidate. There's been crisis as to who will be the governorship candidate in Delta, but we're seeing here that the appeal court has reinstated Obore Wori. Now, we can see a photograph here. This is the commandant of Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps in Cross River, Samuel Fadei, parading a suspect, Gabriel Ajom, who attempted to vandalize the pipeline of the NNPC tank farm in Calabar yesterday. Hmm. So this conversation about parading suspects or sorry, is uh, another co conversation that lots of people have asked, you know, what is the, I mean, it's an argument that can go both ways, right? But that is it really legal to parry the person? Because you're stripping them of their dignity to right of human person. So if you're going to sue them, take them to a court, follow the you know right process of adjudicating on matters rather than publicly parading them. Yeah, because at that point, they haven't been found guilty of anything, exactly. you know, in particular. I um, I think it's it's really born out of the need to show working, you know, mm. that's in, in Nigerian terms, uh, from security agencies and from Ni the Nigerian government agencies generally, you know, a lot of times they feel the urge to show that they are active and show that they are working, you know, for forgetting that these things would be evident in the society. You wouldn't need, you know, necessarily to take pictures every time that you catch a thief. Um, if we realize that crime has gone down, you know, it will be evident in the society. But because of those failures, you know, they, they always feel the need to call the press, you know, as long as there's some camera there, they also they would need to show that, oh, well, we working. are working hard. And unfortunately, you know, and sometimes is... they then get some people that are innocent. Yeah, you unfortunately. Know, but by then, their reputation has been tarnished. Absolutely. That's what I can take this morning on this day, this Nigerian newspaper. We head over to the next. All right, let's go to Zimbabwe now and see what we can find on Newsday uh, this morning. Um, very few stories, actually. It says here, yeah, government stripping assets, and that's from MPs. It says, uh, legislators have accused the executive of systematically stripping the country of its valuable assets and selling them through opaque deals, which observers say smells of deep-rooted corruption and plunder. Uh, it's uh, in a heated question and answer session in Parliament last Thursday. It says it emerged that government has been clandestinely disposing of strategic entities such as mines and petroleum outlets without seeking parliamentary approval in a, fl a flagrant breach of the country's constitution. Well, you can read more on that on Newsday this morning in Zimbabwe uh, and also in Entertainment Mbare, the home of Dance Hall. That's on page 13. And uh, finally, companies fleecing us. That's from the Treasury. The Finance and Economic Development Permanent Secretary, uh, George Guva Matanga, has revealed that many companies are fleecing government by overpricing their goods and services. And he says, in quotes, at the moment we have, um, an, we have an issue of overpricing by service providers and contractors. Some of you members might not uh, have been too happy with me over the hotel's pricing. I'm not happy with the way most hotels are charging government, uh, he also said. Well, those are the stories that we can share on the Newsday newspapers this morning. Now let's head over to Kenya with the Daily Nation. On the front page of the Daily Nation, Decision 2022, will IEBC pass the independence test? The box stops here. We have, um, we can see, of course, William Ruto was declared president-elect by Mr. Wafula Chebukati, but was soon afterwards confronted with a barrage of petitions against his victory. The court is perhaps the biggest battle of the political life, of his political life. And um, this, of course, is Raila Odinga arguing in court's filings that Mr. Ruto didn't receive the constitutional threshold of victory and wants the Supreme Court to order a recount of valid votes or a rerun, so long as the current IEBC does not run the show. Of course, the IEBC has been accused of corruption. Uh, by the side of the paper, we can see chaos, chaos, I beg your pardon, and low voter turnout in Kakamega and Mombasa elections. We uh, will be talking about this in detail much later in the show as it's one of our top stories 
where there have been um, allegations of bribery, ballot stuffing across the political divide that resulted in sporadic incidents of violence. We're looking into these details shortly. And final story this morning, deadly search for water. Lorot, 13, left home in search for water for his family's livestock amid the biting drought and returned with gunshot wounds. What's worse? His elder brothers and neighbours never made it back. It's really sad. Wow, really I don't know sad. how to feel about that story, but that's what we can take in Kenya. Let's move right. over to Uganda. Now let's go to Uganda and see what's on the Daily Monitor this morning. Uh, we see here Museveni speaks on uh, Tumwine NRA role. And uh, you can read more on that. Uh, it says, um, final salute, President Museveni uses the official funeral service at Kololo ceremonial grounds to detail his early days with uh, General Eli Tumwine, their time in the bush and in government. And he praises the disease for bravery and patriotism. It's on pages 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 15. Oh, okay. <laughs> also on the Daily Monitor this morning, Ntungamo um, mourns its Pila Kayamozi. And uh, we can also find at the bottom of the screen, Kidgum RDC, Kabali officials under probe over PDM cash. And also, court sets dates to rule on Watoto wedding case. Not very many stories either here on the Daily Monitor. But of course, we have more of these papers coming your way in the second half of Breakfast Central. For now, it's once again, welcome to Breakfast Central. And of course, if you would like to comment on any of the things that we share at any time during the program, uh, simply tweet at us. It's simply at uh, New Central TV. Share your views with us and we'll be glad to always put them on screen for the continent to see. <music> 